I'm going to show you a method that will help you create amazing blog posts that will help build authority in your niche and gain a following of adoring fans. This method gives you a template that you can use over and over again that will help you build a library of quality content that will help you bring in thousands of new website visitors every month. From my own experience, I've realized that there are a number of things that you must do to have a successful blog. And unfortunately, most small business owners don't know about these things. So in this video, I'm gonna show you this three-step method that includes looking at our content strategy from a longer term perspective. The second thing will be actually writing our blog post. And the third thing will be incorporating some important SEO aspects. Let's jump in and write an amazing blog post. Yes, this video is about writing a great blog post, but in order for it to be a great blog post, you need to know where it fits in in your overarching content strategy. And using this strategy will increase the impact that each individual blog post has. So let's see how we do this then. So step one then, we want to brainstorm all of the different blog post ideas that we have. Write them all down on a page. Don't think about whether they're good or bad at this stage, just write them all down. So the next thing we need to do with our blog post ideas is we need to start creating categories and putting them into the relevant categories. You want to think about having maybe three or four categories to start with. This will hopefully better allow your website visitors and your blog post readers to more easily navigate your blog posts, but will also help Google to understand what your content is about. Step three then, we want to make sure that you're not targeting really broad keywords or highly competitive keywords. As a small website, you're very unlikely to actually be able to be found in the search results or rank for a highly competitive keyword. What we need to do is we need to go to ryrob.com and we need to put in the idea for our blog post or our keyword. And we want it to have a low competition or maybe medium competition level. This means we'll actually have a chance of ranking in the search results. If you're enjoying this video so far, then please consider subscribing to my channel. It really means a lot to me. So now we're ready to go on and write our blog post. We're gonna go back and we're gonna do some more brainstorming. Again, I like doing this with a bubble technique, right? put down my blog post title in the middle of the page and then I connect that with all the different aspects or different subjects that are going to go into that blog post and I'm going to write everything down it doesn't matter if it's going to be included in the final post or not you maybe want to do a bit of research to make sure that the information that you're putting down is accurate and relevant so you have your blog post title you have your subsections and then you can start filling those subsections with the content that will go into them once we have that done we can start organizing our information into a way that is going to flow for our reader. So we want to get an idea as to what order all of this content is going to go into. Now here's some simple tips when it comes to writing your blog post. How can we make your blog post visually appealing? You want to make sure that your language, you keep it simple and avoid overly complicated terminology. Keep your paragraphs and even your sentences quite short and concise. I would advise you to install something like Grammarly and this will help to ensure that your post is error free and absolutely read over it a number of times to make sure that it's correct and it flows nicely for the reader and then send it to someone else to get them to read it too and give you any feedback so now you're nearly ready to hit publish we want to just talk about some of the technical sao aspects of writing a blog post and we're going to do this because we're going to help google and other search engines to e more easily find your blog post and know what it's about i use wordpress for my own websites and my clients websites so that's what i'm going to be using as an example but the information here you'll be able to take and use for whatever website builder you use. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to install a plugin called Yoast SEO. So we wanna install the plugin and we wanna go through the setup wizard. Once we have that done, we wanna go back to our blog post and go to the section just below the blog post. You'll see there's a new, new Yoast section. And this is where we can put in our meta title and description. And I'm gonna to link to a Yoast article that'll help you come up with the ideal meta title and description. And this is important because this is what will appear on the search results whenever someone comes across your blog post. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna go back to the images that we've put into our blog post. And we wanna make sure there's a correct title and an alt text. The alt text is basically what will appear if for some reason your image doesn't load or someone who is visually impaired is using your website. It also reinforces to Google what your blog post is about. So if it's suitable, you can include your keyword in the alt text of your images. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna include external and internal links throughout your blog post. So an internal link is where you link 
from your blog post to other relevant blog posts, or perhaps you want to link to your about section of your website or the contact section. External links then, or when you might say you want to back up something that you're saying in your blog post and you want to link to the original source. That's an external link. You want to include a couple of these throughout your blog post. Next thing we want to do is we want to make sure your website is served over a secure network. And for this, you're going to need an SSL certificate installed on your website. You can check whether your website is secure by going up to the little information icon beside your website URL. I use SiteGround as a hosting provider for my websites and they provide an SSL certificate for all of the new websites. But if you're not sure whether you have an SSL certificate installed or whether you need one, then I would suggest going to your hosting provider in order to get that sorted. Next thing we want to do is really important. We want to utilize Google Search Console. Google Search Console is like having a formal introduction to Google. Without this, you're just existing on the internet without much chance of anyone really finding you. So we want to shake hands with Google and we want to say, I have all this really great content for my readers. Can you please suggest it to them? There are two main things you need to do with Google Search Console is you need to create your account and verify your website with them. And then you need to submit your sitemap. And again, I'm going to link to detailed articles on exactly how you can do this. The next thing we need to do, and you can look at this as a long term strategy, is you want to start building backlinks to your website. Backlinks are basically when other websites link to your website. They really help build authority with Google, especially if you can get websites that have more authority with Google linking to your website. And there are a couple of ways you can do this. You can write guest blog posts on other websites. You can appear on podcasts. And the other thing you can do is you can go to the professional body websites for your profession. So let's just say you're a dietitian or a reflexologist. There are professional bodies that have their own websites and you can go to them and say, I'm providing this service. Can you please include me and my website on your website? The more important websites you can get linking to yours, the more authority your website is going to have. Did you know that the days of paper business cards are gone? If you come across a potential customer, you don't want to have to root through your bag in order to find an up-to-date paper business card. This is why you need a digital business card. With a digital business card, you can share your contact details, your business details, which is the click or tap of a finger. If you want to see how you can create your own digital business card, then watch this video next. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.